Thanks. Okay. Okay. Right. Any any questions based on what we um, what we've been learning? Right. Okay. okay so just wanted to ask uh, you know ask you one question. You know what is what is the difference between a thermometer and a thermostat? Or like we can say. Like the remote that you have for an AC, right? We don't usually have thermostats where, in our country, like where the heating is already it's already warm through the year. So thermostat is something that is used to control the heating in a particular environment. So maybe you know we can say AC, right? You have an AC remote and a temperature uh, or a, and a thermometer. Okay, what's the difference? Or what is the specific features of thermometer and Hmm. So, hmm. Regulate the room temperature. So, a, temp a, a thermometer shows us. Okay, this is the temperature. It will say whether it's 24, 25, 20, whatever degree centigrade. That's it, right? It shows you. Um, yeah, once it shows the temperature, and yes. So, it just it doesn't control it. It doesn't change it. Like thermometer doesn't change. It. It's like you can say, okay, it's 24. Uh, suppose you wanted to bring it down to 22, it doesn't. Like whereas, if you have a you know remote in an air conditioner or you know, I mean, if, a, if there's a thermostat in the house, then you know heating or whatever, it actually changes the temperature in the environment, right? So, so we can actually choose to be either like a thermometer or like a thermostat or like one of those AC remotes, right? We can choose. So what is that? It means that okay, one is okay. You experience maybe fear, maybe you experience, you know, in the environment hopelessness. You experience chaos, confusion, right? Lack of peace, maybe. And you could be like a thermometer saying, okay, this is what I sense, and stop there. Okay, and show that okay, this is what it is. I'm feeling this. People are like this, and and stop there. Or we can choose to be like a thermostat where we choose to not only just know that or perceive what is happening but we choose to change and we choose to change we choose to um, how do we do that you know we choose to dig in spiritually we choose to you know plant ourselves in the word of god and say okay i'm going to rise above this right i'm going to rise above this i'm going to go beyond this I know this is how it is, but we're going to go beyond this, right? I'm going to take the word of God and what the word of God says about what I'm perceiving right now, and you know, and and sing that and declare that and change. Right? So, so maybe you know, we're ministering in worship or even personally, right? We can we can choose and say, okay, this is what my situation is, but I'm going to go with the word of God. Right. I'm going to declare the word of God. I'm going to praise God uh, in this season, maybe. Season means it's a fairly long period of time, right? Summer, in, in, in our, uh, at least in Bangalore or in, in, in India, is at least two months, right? At least two months in Bangalore. May, April, May, right? Or March and April, peak summer, right? So, so season is a long, a fairly long period of time, right? Weather is like, okay, that day, today's weather forecast, right? It's shiny, I mean, sun is shining, it's bright, or it's stormy, whatever. Season is a fairly long period of time. So whether it's, you know, it could be for that particular moment, or it could be for a season that we can choose. Okay, I'm going through this season, you know, it's like this. This is what the environment is, or this is what I'm experiencing day in and day out, but... In this season, I'm choosing to praise the Lord. I'm choosing to lift up God's word. I'm choosing to go with what God's word says. Or it could be just like the weather for that moment, for that day. Right? It could be a, a whatever we are experiencing and, and saying, okay, I'm choosing to take the word of God and 
praise the word of god and declare the word of god so whether it's you know for that day or whether it's for a extended period of time we can choose right we get to choose okay i will praise the lord psalm 34:1 you know we get to say i will whether it's a season or whether it's for that particular day right so um okay i'm just going on, mo moving ahead to um to expressions okay expressions of praise okay. the scripture has a lot of things to um uh, talk about different expressions of praise just like how we looked at those different words which again you know are related to the different expressions of praise um the word of god has several expressions of praise okay now um i remember in one of those uh, you know having a meet one of those early days one meeting and then we had actually called our professor from college uh he was not a believer and he came and you know after that uh, first half of the meeting he came on stage and he was just meeting with all of us students who were and then and then he was surprised he said uh, you know uh, why why are you all singing right why why do you sing and then everybody seems to know the songs and everybody is singing why are you singing right uh, for him that worship of god and singing was you know it didn't go hand in hand for some for some reason you know why are you singing so when we look at the word of god we see that singing is a very scriptural expression of praise unto god and you you think about it maybe you grew up in a christian church kind of an environment and you don't think too much about singing right or any start of the meeting somebody will say okay let us sing this song you you will have some chorus let us sing this song and so it's a almost a given thing okay this is what happens when people gather together believers gather together there'll be at least one song at the close or at the start some one song will be there right so we say okay we're just singing but actually the word of god says that singing is a very valid expression of praise unto god and in the natural if you see you know when we sing when we speak it when we sing it like we saw you know a couple of classes back there is a change there is a change in expression there's a change in engagement involvement right and there's a change in emotion when we sing okay let's look at some um uh, some expressions that we see here uh, so starting with singing let's look at psalm 47 and verse 6 right psalm 47 okay okay psalm 47 verse 6 sing, sing praises to god sing praises sing praises to our king sing praises right and in fact that chapter has other expressions also we will go back to it like clapping and shouting and all that so um sing praises to god right so we see this uh, another uh, chapter that we can go to in the psalms is psalm 100 right and um, we've read that many times at the beginning of the service or you know um make a joyful uh, shout to the lord that's how it starts verse 4 enter into his gates with thanksgiving enter into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his name for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations right enter into his gates with singing enter into his courts with praise uh, sorry with thanksgiving enter his courts with praise if you look at verse 2 it says serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing that's verse 2 right psalm 100 verse to serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing verse 4 enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise so as we come before the lord and make a choice to you know be in the presence of the lord the, the psalmist is exhorting you come before him with enter into his presence with singing right so we see that um, well singing is is a joyful thing singing can also be a sad thing right when we uh, it can be also expressing different emotions etc but it's a when we when we look at that verse when we look at that chapter we see that it's a it's a joyful expression right we are coming before his presence it, it, the, how does uh, verse 1 read you no know, some 100 verse 1 make a joyful shout to the lord all you lands serve the lord with gladness come before his presence with singing right so we see that it's it's something out of a heart that is glad 
and it's something that is done joyfully, right? And it also reflects the nature of God, the character of God, right? Which means that, you know, if somebody's angry, you won't go into that presence with singing, right? And, and, and we've all had situations like that at home, right? Where the parents are angry about something or the other, and uh, immediately the mood in the house changes, right? Shifts. No singing, no noise, volumes. I mean, why? Dad is in a bad mood, right? He's angry, something is missing. So everybody's tip, you know, tiptoeing around the house, no noise, no, every, all volume has come down. Right? Whereas if there is a shift in the, you know, if, if there's everybody is free and uh, everybody's joyful, and the head of the house, you know, is all, you know, the parents are all fine and happy and everybody's in a bad, I mean, good mood. Then there is, you know, singing and people are just spontaneously singing. There's a, you know, there's, you, you blast your music on whatever, you know. So all that is happening. So it reflects the character of God and the nature of God. And you look at these verses, right? It just points to God being someone who's joyful, points to God being someone who is who's looking forward to us being in his presence. Now, it's not like saying, oh, these guys have come again. Oh, supernatural hour, every, you know, every day, 12 o'clock, these guys come before my presence with singing. Or, you know, it's not like that. Like God is not saying, oh, you, not again. Like sometimes we do that, right? When guests come, oh, again, they'll come. And at this moment, you know, when it's inconvenient for us, right? sometimes we do that. We think like that. But then God doesn't think like that. Right? He's, he's joyful. He's accepting of us. He's welcoming. Right. So um, we look at the nature of God. It says, he, "It is He who made us, and and we not ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture." Uh, verse five: For the Lord is good; His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. He is good; His mercy is everlasting, never ending, everlasting. Right. So, singing. Okay, so um, it's a valid expression of praise unto God. Okay, so that is why we sing. Okay, many reasons. It's not because it's a it's a nice tune. It's not because it's a nice melody. But we singing the scriptural truth of who God is, and God welcomes us when we come into His presence with singing. Okay, the next one that we see, same Psalm forty-seven. It says, uh, and what we saw just now is shout. Right, a shout of Praise. That is again a valid expression. And just like how we saw the battle of, at Jericho and or Gideon and a shout of praise, lifting up our voice um, in a shout of praise, right? So it's a shout of victory. It's a shout acknowledging that God is victorious, that you are victorious, that you are who God says you are, right? It is a joyful shout of praise. It's a triumphant shout of praise. Okay, we see several. Uh, references which talk about that. Psalm 95 is also a great place where we um, read about the various expressions of praise and worship. Okay. If you look at Psalm 95, okay. Okay, Psalm 95, O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods, and so on. Verse 6, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, um, our maker. Right? Psalm 95, very expressions of praise, worship are given there. And then we see that this shouting is also mentioned there. Okay? Psalm 47, 1 again talks about clap. Right? Clapping. When do we clap hands? Sorry? To appreciate, okay, somebody is getting an award, and then everybody, you know, say, put your hands together, let's, you know, applaud. When else, you know, what are other reasons for clapping? When do you clap hands? Celebration, when you're happy, right? Um, sorry? Birthday, yeah? And somebody cuts a birthday cake. <laughs> yeah, celebration. So you're happy, and then you clap. Was there a time when you just clapped? Spontaneously, nobody told you to clap, right? Nobody told you to clap, but you just you just clapped, huh? In worship, mm -hmm. 
right so your your heart is full you're overwhelmed your heart is overflowing and uh, you just can't help but just clap and applaud right so many times like in our in our times of worship and i'm sorry when we're singing and worship and praise we clap because it's in line with the tempo right he say uh, should be says come on let's put our hands together okay blessing and honor yeah we clap okay we either clap on the 2 and the 4 or 1 and the 3 right we i think uh, most of us clap on the 1 and the 3 blessing or 1 1 2 3 4 you know we just clap like that so it's in it's in uh, it's to keep up with the tempo okay i remember a couple of sundays back or maybe three, three sundays back uh, we were leading worship at a uh, church location and said okay you know is it is it okay to clap hands in the house of god and then everybody started clapping and it was so loud that the drummer and the team could not hear the you know the metronome which was there and so we had to switch it off because the clapping was so loud and the clapping was also not in time with what we were playing right i think it was slower and we were going fast and they said okay no point uh, the church has taken over so <laughs> let's switch off the metronome so you know but i i'm just saying trying to say that you know sometimes we clap uh, it's more like a um let's say a uh, it it's you know it's to keep time with the song uh, to keep uh, time with the tempo and all that right so yeah i see several responses here when we agree with what someone said in appreciation etc yeah so um so clapping right but we see here that clapping is actually one of the thing is to approve to applaud to recognize right to to say show appreciation right so when we applaud god right that's a, again a valid expression of praise unto god you're applauding our god awesome you are awesome right you are great and uh, i remember in some of the uh, some of the churches uh, clapping is frowned upon like clapping is irreverent it seems irreverent it seems child childish right you know why, why do you want to clap hands i mean you should be reverent you should be respectful uh, and clapping is seen seen as something that is disrespectful right um so well it's just that we not got an understanding a revelation of scriptural praise and worship and where where scriptural scripturally clapping is seen as a very valid expression of praise and worship i know you know all of us we could come from different church backgrounds so um you know just to look into the word and see okay this is valid this is something maybe church back home did not do or does not do but this is valid right? you know that okay this is scripture this is what it says in the bible so it is valid right so in your own personal life you can actually put it to you you know inculcate it and say okay i want to do this okay. singing yeah we do shouting maybe not right so we say okay i want to do it right when the it's not this you shout all the time but when we are actually um, you know declaring victory and when the lord is leading to uh, you know saying okay i want to release a breakthrough among you and this is what you need to do so we join in and not see it as something that we are uncomfortable with right so also applauding then lifting up our hands we've seen it right uh, let's look at some of the verses that talk about it okay uh, psalm 134 and verse 2 right psalm 134 okay lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the lord okay so the word bless means to again to exhort the lord to uh, to sing praises or shout praises or lift up and you know praise him so lift hands in the sanctuary and bless the lord uh, i remember mentioning right some one a person who was not used to coming to church um and she she was actually she came to church for the first time and she asked the neighbor you know the friend who had brought her to church and you know, why are people lifting their hands you know suddenly you know at one point why are they, they just lifted their hands and they're singing why why do they why do people lift their hands right so i don't know what explanation he gave but then but people are curious 
right? It could be something that you may be also thinking, you know, maybe maybe it's for one denomination, particular denomination. Maybe it's for the young people, you know. No, it's a very biblical, scriptural expression to lift hands. We saw, right? All that involves lifting of hands. For example, you know, when we studied y yada, the word yada, we we looked at all that, right? So, what do you think? What does lift of, lifting of hands signify? Anyone? Surrendering. What else? This row, lifting of hands. This row, huh? honoring, is it? Okay. Praising, lifting of hands. In, in, in the natural, if you lift hands, what does it signify? Surrender, yield, yes. What else? Receiving, right? open hand, open palms. Your, it's an act of saying, okay, that's how you receive, right? Give me, you're saying receiving, yeah. It's, a, it's an act of, when we, when we are actually yielding and surrendering, it's an act of vulnerability, meaning that, hey, I'm not defensive, right? I'm not guarding myself. I'm coming to you unguarded. I don't have any defense before me, God. You know, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that, God, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful now. I know you, you could do something to me, so I'm, you know, I'm putting all this defense. I'm trying to put on a, you know, a mask before you. No, they're saying that I'm removing all that. I'm making myself vulnerable, unguarded before you. What else? Sorry, one. Let God get, take control. Okay, so when you're saying, you know, you're surrendering, you're saying you take control. Yes. One more thing. Sorry. Calling on God. No? Calling out. Okay. Pointing and calling out, is it? Okay. Um, okay, respect, surrender. Um, okay, it is also reaching out. You know, it's a, it's an expression of hunger. It's saying you know, you're reaching out to God. Oh, I want, I need you. Right, it's an expression of our deep hunger for God. Right, so, so here we see, you know, lift up your hands and bless the Lord. Right, you're giving something unto God. You might be receiving something. You might be saying, God, um, you know, I, I'm coming to you as I am. Nothing, God, nothing holding, nothing. I'm not want. To, I don't want to put up a defense. All that is signified by our lifting up of hands, right? So, again, lifting of hands. It's not for a particular set of people or a set of denominations and so on. Not for a certain age group, but it's for every believer. Right? It's a very valid expression of praise and worship unto God, right? Okay. Then the fifth one is playing of music instruments, right? So this again, what kind of instruments, what kind of instruments should be used, what should not be used? What do you think? Is there a description, description? We see harps, trumpets, cymbals. So should we just stick to that or what? Huh? Many instruments. But then in the Bible, only these are mentioned, no? <laughs> Those times, right? Actually, if you if you read through, um, you know, I think Second Chronicles and we, uh, I think it's First Chronicles, right? Where we read about the tabernacle, you see that actually David, he invented many instruments, right? We see many musical instruments. The names are not listed there, but he just made up certain instruments, okay, some string, whatever. And uh, they were all used, right? So it's just a vehicle, just a, something that you use to enhance your expression of praise to God. Or when you sing it with it, it comes together in a beautiful way, right? So we see that. And different cultures around the world use different kinds of instruments, right? Um, any Indian instruments that you can think of, you know, like tavli or tabla or sitar or, you know, um, what else? The tanpura and there's so many instruments, right? What the the flute and you know, you see all these instruments and so different cultures, different um, instruments. Um, yeah, I see um, your comments, Sobagya and Joanne, and thank you. Yeah, so we see different expressions or different instruments which used to, you know, express things. For and each instrument has a speciality. Right, it's a, it has a specific 
um, right, uh, specific expression, of course. But the way the music comes out, you know, some are percussive, right? What are percuss percussive instruments? Like the drum drums, the Congo, the, the cajon, like these are percussion, right? Instruments of percussion. So it is something, it's an accompaniment. It, uh, it, it gives the tempo, it gives a beat. It, uh, it actually, it, it also expresses something, you know, when you play, uh, play that alone also, right? So some are percussive. In fact, actually, piano is also very percussive, right? Um, piano with these hammers and strings and so on. So, um, so we see different instruments actually are used to bring in different expressions or bring in different moments um, to the words of the song, right? So musical instruments enhance the song. Musical instruments, when you, when you sing with it, it uh, you know it's it's a valid expression. We see several instruments being mentioned in the Bible. Um, let's look at some. Uh, Second Chronicles five. Okay, 13, 14. Okay, so... Okay, so... Um, actually, 12 talks about... Um, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles five and verse twelve says, and the Levites who were the singers, all those of Asaph and Haman and Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, stringed instruments, and harps, and with them one hundred and twenty priests, sounding uh, with trumpets. Right? Indeed, it came to pass. When the trumpets, trumpeters and singers as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments um, uh, of music and praised the Lord. Right. So they are using these instruments. They are praising the Lord and saying, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. That the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering. Um, because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. So it talks about this particular inaugural service that happened in the inauguration of the temple which Solomon built. Right. So, so we see that these instruments were used. The instruments were used in praising God, and and then we see that the glory of God, you know, filling the whole temple, and they could not continue in their expression of praise to God. Right. So we see that. Okay. Then. Um, yeah, there are several uh, scriptures that we can maybe we just look at one more. We can look at Psalm 135. Um, sorry. Yes, several um, Psalms also, like the last Psalm, uh, also lists down a lot of instruments, right? Okay, Psalm 150 says, uh, verse 3 Praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Okay, and praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Okay, so. so, using instruments, different kinds of instruments in praising God when worshiping God, very valid. Again, right now, sometimes you might have heard people saying, "Okay, we can't use this instrument. You can't use drums. You can't use this." You know, that's that's not valid because it's it says that it says some loud symbols, right? Loud clashing symbols, and so on. So it's just that it needs to be appropriate to the song, right? The kind of instruments that we use, and the volume and the level and everything. The expression with those instruments has to be appropriate with the song and with the with the truth that we are actually expressing. Right? Is it a song of love and adoration to the Lord? Is it appropriate to play something with clashing symbols, or if is it something as a spiritual battle and a walk of victory? What is the right expression? So it's it depends on what you are expressing, right? So the kind of instruments and then the expression of it. Okay? Um, also, it is true that if we are not careful, you know, we will be. We'll become very dependent on music 
in order to worship right in order to worship the lord some people say no i need to have a keyboard without keyboard uh, i don't feel you know that one chord should be there on you know that pads and and gum kind of effect and then my hands will automatically go up <laughs> right so we become, what is it we have become too dependent on the music whereas the lord jesus says you know those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth yes all these instruments are fine but if you're going to be dependent on it you know without this i cannot on my own i cannot you know, i need to have this in order to worship then you know that there's something wrong there right so um instruments are valid uh, we can definitely you know use that it's scriptural it's biblical okay okay then the uh, another interesting one is standing okay standing as an expression of praise and expression of worship unto god in the natural why do we stand standing means that when somebody walks in and you stand you're actually showing respect right maybe for elders maybe for royalty maybe for you know someone who is uh, superior in rank and whatever we stand up in order to show respect right so it's an it's a valid expression you are actually showing respect to the lord to god to whom you are addressing to whom we are praising you're standing to show respect right standing also means that you are alert okay, you will never see a soldier just you know lounging or sitting cross legged and this you know with his semi automatic rifle just lounging there right so and soldier is alert is walking around but always you know standing and moving about right so standing also respect i, I mean shows that a person is alert you know standing when you stand automatically your body becomes alert right and that's why you know sometimes when we have this five days of prayer and people are uh, wanting to doze off the the antidote is you stand then your you know everything clears up right so anybody wants to stand <laughs> okay so standing you know brings in alertness okay then the other thing is singing in the spirit right singing in the spirit let's look at that um, you know john chapter 4 the lord says john chapter 4 23 24 okay now uh, this is the lord jesus having this conversation with the woman at the well right with the samaritan woman and uh, in that he says this is the kind of worship we must worship the father in spirit and in truth okay so he says those who worship the worship must worship in spirit and in truth and the father is seeking such to worship those worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth so spirit truth two things two aspects okay, of true worship okay when we say spirit we are talking about worship from our innermost being from our spirit and also as led by the spirit of god engaging with the holy spirit the spirit of god takes us into the presence of god we worship god by the spirit scripture says so we are sensitive to the holy spirit as led by the spirit of god spirit, spirit of god leads us um to the presence of god and and so on so we do that right so when we look at 1 corinthians 14 right paul writes something um interesting and it has to do with um praying in the spirit it has to do with singing in the spirit he's talking about um praying in tongues okay this 1 corinthians 12 13 14 these three chapters he's actually talking about the gifts of the spirit right to the corinthian church and one of the gifts of the spirit is praying in tongues right so 1 corinthians 14 and if you if you look at um verse 14 and verse 15 says for if i pray in a tongue my spirit prays but my understanding is unfruitful verse 15 what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding i will sing with the spirit and i will also sing with the understanding okay so he is differentiating between praying in tongues and praying in your own mother tongue or mother you know in in your own language language that you know 
right? He's differentiating between this and that. So he says, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with my understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. So we can actually sing in the spirit or sing with the spirit and which is singing in tongues. Right? So that is again an expression that we see in the New Testament, right? In the after the baptism of the Holy Spirit and after the gifts of the Spirit released to the church. And this is a beautiful gift that we have to sing with the Spirit. And all that is accompli or accomplished by praying in tongues. Okay. So I, I know we looked at that and Holy Spirit class also, you are learning about it, right? And you will learn about the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, like, But what is your understanding? Right now, you know, what does praying in tongue accomplish? Praying in tongues accomplish for a believer. What happens to you when you pray in the spirit or pray in tongues? What are some things that happen to us? Okay, one thing that the Bible says is edification, which means building up. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14 says, He who speaks in a... Um, Sorry, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14 and verse 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. So which means praying in tongues builds up. Builds you up on the inside in the spirit. What else happens? We are talking to God. Yes. Sorry. We are speaking mysteries, which means the mysteries of God. The things that are hidden to be revealed. You know, those are the mysteries, right? Hidden to be revealed. Now, those things, you know, again, we, we look at um, verse 2, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, right? Um, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So things that are hidden to be revealed, and they are revealed to our spirit. Right? As you pray in tongues, the things, the mysteries, the things that are, it could be about God, right? It could be about your own life. It could be about my own life, right? What are some things that God has in store? Things hidden yet to be revealed in my own life, right? Things yet to come to pass in my own life. Now, when we pray, we are actually praying that we are receiving that in our spirit man, right? He who prays speaks mysteries, right? So that is happening. What else? Edification, speaking mysteries. Sorry? Helps in prayer, in the sense, uh, maybe a little more specific. OK, so when you don't, you're saying when you don't feel like praying, or when you, we don't know what to pray. OK, OK, so when we don't know what to pray, then the Holy Spirit helps us. Okay, so we see that in Romans chapter 5. Okay, so, so all these things that we see, okay, this happens because I pray in tongues. Okay, we are looking at some of those things. So Romans chapter, let's say Romans 5. And um, if you look at, uh, I think, which verse is that? I'm sorry, I'm just... Okay, sorry, not Romans 5, Romans 8, right? Romans 8 and verse 26. Okay, Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 says... Um, okay, um, it says... Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Okay? But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, Romans 5, 26. Okay. So the Spirit is, what is the Holy Spirit doing? He is he's helping us. He is making intercession for us. Intercession is praying for others. So the Holy Spirit is praying that perfect prayer according to the will of God, according to the mind of God. And you know these, these perfect prayers are not going to be not answered. 
right? Because it's in perfect alignment and will with the word of God, alignment and in line with the word of God, the will of God, right? So I don't know what I should pray for. Like maybe there are many choices in front of me, A, B, C, and D. I don't know what should I pray, God, right? What is your will? What is your plan? What should I pray for? And sometimes we don't know. We don't know what should we pray in that particular situation. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us, right? He makes that perfect prayer for us. How does it? How do? You, how does he do it? It says, with he, the Spirit Himself makes intercessions for us with groanings. Okay, it's it's what is a groan? It's something that comes from deep within. It's a cry, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay, which means that these are not words that make sense. Right? Groaning is not a is not a, a sound that makes sense. It's a cry of the heart. It's a cry from deep within, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Meaning, in other words, it means that words that are not articulate speech that are not part of articulate speech right so the spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered right which are not uttered as articulate speech and that is what it means so verse 27 he who searches the hearts not what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god so that's the beautiful thing he makes those intercessions according to the will of God. What is What does God have for you? What is God's will for you in your life, in the season of life that you, you are in? What is God's will for you about your future? What is about your immediate future, about your long-term future? What is God's will for you about, you know, about your profession, about your ministry? What is God's will for you? The Holy Spirit makes intercession for you, right? According to the will of God. God. It's a beautiful thing. Right? No wonder Satan fights this so much, right? In the church and, and even for you know for the believer, it fights this so much. So, so these things, some of the things that are accomplished when we pray in tongues. Now, Paul is saying, I will pray with the spirit. You know, that word with could also be interpreted as with or in or by, right? In the Greek. So Paul is saying, I will pray with the Spirit, I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, I will also sing with the understanding. So, when we sing in tongues, that is also uh, an expression of you know, praise unto God. Why praise unto God? Because we looked at intercession, etc. But when we look at Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 10, we see that people were actually magnifying God, glorifying God, praying in tongues. Acts chapter 2, right? Because all the people were drawn to what was happening there in that upper room. And they said, we hear the praises of God in our own language. Acts chapter 10, same thing. In Cornelius' house, they were actually praising God in tongues. They were magnifying God in tongues. So when, when we sing in tongues, we are actually praising God. We are magnifying God, right? So again, that is a valid expression. So Again, the question is, okay, how should I sing it? Or where should I do this? Right? The same guidelines for praying in tongues apply here also. Which means that hey, if it is a message in tongues, if it is a song that is, you know, I'm just declaring publicly, if people, if there is an interpretation, then let me do it. Otherwise, let it be just between me and God. Right? It's it's fine. I can sing in tongues. No, I can between me and God, I can sing it. Right. So if we are gathered together to in order to praise God in order to worship God, maybe you know we can all sing together, sing in tongues, sing with the understanding, sing with the tongues, right, and worship God, and all the things that are accomplished um, while praying in the spirit are also accomplished when we sing in tongues, right? Okay, um, then comes dancing. So, what do you think of dancing? This is something that is controversial because some cultures have a culture of dancing. Right? The Jewish culture, there was dancing for celebration. There was dance, right? Um, for us, you know, I think even in South and everything, South India, or maybe in in our, in, our, uh, in our nation, there is a culture of dancing, right? But when it comes to worship, 
in the church somehow you know that culture of dance is is not there or maybe it could be a very choreographed dance right so all that is there something not something very spontaneous which represents joy which represents freedom which represents celebration but when we look at scripture we see that uh, you know that is something that is valid right let's look at uh, zephaniah 3 and verse 17 it talks about what the lord does okay not about what man does okay uh, what the lord does zephaniah chapter 3 the lord is rejoicing the lord is singing and it also talks about what he does okay zephaniah after habakkuk right 3 and uh, verse 17 right it says the lord okay you're following through right the lord your god in your midst the mighty one will save he will rejoice over you with gladness right? he will quiet you with this love he will rejoice over you with singing okay so three things well, he will rejoice with gladness he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing okay that that word that word rejoice it talks about rejoicing with dancing okay in the hebrew that word which is used there i, I forget the exact uh, term but we can find that out rejoice with gladness which it's it's a it means literally to jump up and spin around right so we might have different pictures of who God is and what God does and all that. But can you imagine God rejoicing in this manner? It is God, right? He is doing the Lord, your God in your midst, the mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So this is God singing over his people. This is God singing over you. This is God rejoicing in this manner over you, over us. Right? It says here, and that word rejoicing is literally to dance with joy. Right? To dance with joy, to jump up and spin around and to dance with joy. So it's a very extravagant expression of love and rejoicing. Right? So if you look at um, th this aspect of dancing, you know, it, yes. It it has no inherent value, but it's an expression, right? It can it, it can bring so much of release when you when you actually go before the Lord in so much of freedom, right? So suppose people are not comfortable, we don't have to judge them. You know, any of these expressions, we don't have to judge them and say, okay, this person is less spiritual, or this person is less less mature, this person is you know not free enough, etc. Well, it could be true, but then we don't have to judge them, right? Uh, they will come to the revelation and understanding and they will come to an expression of worship. That is, they will grow like all of us have, right? So that's the thing. Um, so that's what something that we see about dancing, right? And several other scriptures also talk about that, okay? right? Then, lastly, uh, one other expression um, of praise or expression of worship is um, it's, it's more of an expression of worship where we see kneeling, bowing, and prostrating before the Lord. Like kneeling and bowing and prostrating before the Lord. Uh, Psalm 95 verse 6 talks about that. So it says, I will kneel, and come before the Lord, kneel down before him. Um, let's just go to that verse once again, Psalm 95. And this is verse 6, the psalmist is you know, inviting, and he says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. So, you know, kneeling down, we saw that kneeling down is a, is a form of just humbling ourselves, like right? extreme humility when we kneel down before someone. Right? So, um, kneel before the Lord. Revelation 19 also talks about you know that, about kneeling down, and uh, you know when when we look at the book of Acts, it talks about the name of Jesus. Or uh, Philipp, Philippians also talks about the name of Jesus. That name, at which name every knee will bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. So it's a it's a act of surrender. It's humbling ourselves before the. Lord. So we see all these expressions of praise, expressions of worship, which are there in Scripture. And these are all 
know, for us to know and understand that, okay, if we see others doing it, or if we see, you know, see it in the Bible, it's for us, right? And if, if we are walking in this valid expressions, it's fine, but this is something for us to grow into, right? As we have seen it, it's there in the Bible, right? Okay, so we will stop here. And then we'll continue with chapter five in our next class. Again, thank you so much. God bless. Bye bye.